I'm Mike with the Wisconsin Historical Museum. We're going to talk about a little science experiment that you can do to illustrate buoyancy. Have you ever found anything interesting in the water? A shell, a rock, maybe an animal? Well, underwater archaeologists dive deep into the water to find shipwrecks. There are nearly 700 shipwrecks in Wisconsin's waters. And underwater archaeologists study these shipwrecks to find out what life was like on the vessels, find out why the vessels might have sunk. And so we're going to do a little bit of an experiment to, to see how they do it. Have you ever tried to sink to the bottom of the water? It's kind of hard. And there's a concept, a science concept called neutral buoyancy, which is what makes it kind of hard. It's, it's why you float in the water more than you sink. So we have a little experiment here that we're going to show you how to do so you can learn a little bit more about neutral buoyancy. Now, make sure that you do this with a responsible adult, and we're going to show you how to do this science experiment. Okay, so here are the items that you're going to need to do this science experiment. You need a plastic bottle filled with water. You want to fill it all the way up to the very top. You need some flexible straws. You need some paper clips. We have some big ones here and some small ones. You need a glass or, or a bowl of water. And you need a pair of scissors. Now what you're going to do is you're going to start by cutting both sides of the straw about one inch from the bend. So about like that on that side and about like that on that side. Okay, so we're going to take our cut straw and we're going to slide it onto our paper clip. And we're going to put our going to put our diver right there like that and we're going to add going to add another small paper clip here to add a little bit of weight to it. Now we're going to take our cup of water, test it out, see what happens. There, our diver is floating. <clears throat> now we're going to take our diver. We're going to go to the big water bottle here. We're going to open it up. We'll stick our diver in, close them off, and now you'll see as we squeeze the bottle, our diver sinks to the bottom. When I let some pressure go, it comes back up to the top. Doesn't take a lot of pressure, just a little bit of pressure, just squeezing the sides. I'm going to see if I can stop our diver. Oh. Stop the diver a little bit and let the diver go back up. <clears throat> so that's how you make our our diver activity and we hope you have fun with it when you first put the diver into the bottle the combined density of the straw and paper clip is slightly less than the density of water so it floats a small bubble of air gets trapped in the straw when you put the diver in the bottle when you squeeze the bottle you increase the pressure so water is forced up into the straw, compressing the air bubble in the straw. As the air bubble gets smaller, the density of the diver increases and the diver begins to sink. When you release the bottle, the pressure lessens and the water moves back out of the straw. The air bubble in the straw returns to its original size, causing the diver to become less dense and float back to the top of the bottle. Underwater archaeologists have some special equipment to help them maintain the buoyancy that they want. They have a vest that has an air bladder in it and they can control the amount of air that's in the air bladder. If they want to maintain negative buoyancy and sink lower down, they decrease the amount of air that's in the air bladder. If they want to have positive buoyancy, then they increase the amount of air that's in the air bladder and that brings them up to the surface. Now the size of the air in the bladder is also expanding, so they have to do it kind of carefully. They can't inflate or deflate things too quickly. They have to do it slowly and slowly rise up to the surface. <laughs>